feature comic of the night! Case feature is five bucks! That's right, it's a bus. Topher motherfucking riddle! Let's go, baby! Thanks for the hug. Uh, I am I am a hugger. I'm a bit of a, a hug whore. I'm a whore for hugs. I'm a, I'm a whore hugger. Well, not well, no. No, not that not that last one. Uh, everybody ready? Everybody got your drinky drinks and you're you're ready to, to do this? Let's do. Oh, okay, okay. Let's do this. Um, I. Uh, to prepare for this, I, I actually sort of shaved. Like, I can't really grow a full beard. Uh, the best I can do is, uh, like, at, at a full beard, it looks like I just put some glue on my face and sort of walked through, like, a hair storm, and some of it sort of stuck to my face. That's the best I can do. Uh, but this morning, to get ready for this, I was like, I, I gotta look good, so I should probably sort of shave, trim this down. Uh, and whenever I get to my mustache area, um, I tend to shave this side and then this side, leaving just this little bit in the middle. And this morning I looked at it in the mirror and I was like, maybe I'll try it out. Maybe I'll try it out. I didn't. I decided to get rid of the, the Hitler mustache. I'm probably going to be the cleanest comic tonight, so I hope you guys don't fall asleep. Here we go! Here we go! Here are the jokes. I actually like to start by retiring a joke that I used to do a long time ago. Um, I'll t here's the joke. I'll tell you what the joke is that I'm retiring. Um, my mom is the one who used to tell me that I should get into stand-up comedy because she said that I looked like famous funny person uh, Gary Shandling. And I guess, I guess I kind of look like Gary Shandling if Gary Shandling uh, ate the black guy from the Green Mile. <laughs> That's the joke that I'm retiring. I'm retiring, retiring it for a few reasons. One, when I first started doing that joke, the Green Mile is just a few years old. Now it's been like 14 years. It's not really topical. Uh, number two, Michael Clark Duncan, who played the black guy in the Green Mile, is, uh, he's dead. He is super dead. <laughs> It is what, what is known in the medical community as super dead. Uh, uh, number three, nobody ever says that I look like Gary Shandling. Uh, the one I get a lot, especially recently in the last few years, is uh, you look like Jonah Hill, or more accurately they say, you look like that guy from Superbad. Uh, I was actually in the Kmart down the street about a year ago, and this girl came up to me and she was like, are you that guy from Superbad? And I was just thinking, yeah, because Academy Award nominee Jonah Hill would be shopping for socks in the Kmart in West Columbia. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, this girl is not too bright, clearly. Like, when people say, you can do anything if you put your mind to it, they're not talking about her. You know? <laughs> um, and so my brain was like, no, I don't like her, not interested, but my eyes had formed an alliance, and they both liked her because she was very pretty. And so what I said was, have you seen me in Moneyball? Uh, speaking of Moneyball, uh, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt's in Moneyball. Did you know that Brad Pitt is 50 years old? I, I found that out not too long ago. Brad Pitt just turned 50, like a few months ago. And it just made me think about aging. You know, like, I feel like I'm well into my 30s now that I'm 30. <laughs> you know, and stuff starts breaking down, falling apart. Uh, I got hit in the face playing hockey, and I broke a tooth, and I ended up needing a root canal. Um, and, the, like, I went to the, the dentist, and he gave me antibiotics. And I was like, are there any sort of uh, weird side effects that I should know about? 
And he, uh, he's like, no, I can't think of any weird well, yeah, side effects that you, you might need to know about. Uh, but there was, there was one that I wish we had learned more about. Because I took the antibiotics, and then the next morning I woke up and I went to the bathroom, and my pee was bright orange. <laughs> Like I was a soda fountain dispensing Fanta. <laughs> like, I, I could have been worried about that. that would have been nice. uh, he also he wanted to give me painkillers, but I couldn't afford you know good painkillers because I don't have insurance. And he's like, "Well, do you have ibuprofen at home? Just take a couple of ibuprofen uh, every few hours. That should be fine." So I did that. I went home. I took two ibuprofen and I I threw them at the pain. And pain turned around <laughs> and just laughed and laughed. And then pain was like, is that all you got? And I said, yes it is, because I don't have insurance. And then pain was like, where's your precious Obamacare now? I don't know, I don't really follow politics. And then pain was like, are you a Jew? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't think I like where this is going. Pain is a dick, I guess is what I'm saying. But like, the root canal made it so I couldn't open my mouth very wide, and I just thought, well, this is really bad for business. Yeah, but, uh, and then the worst part was that down the street from my house there's this Italian restaurant that makes these amazing uh, meatball subs, like the best meatball sub I've ever had. Uh, and I couldn't open my mouth wide enough to eat it, which is a real shame because it's hands down the best 11 inches I've ever put into my mouth. <laughs> because I, I love food. Uh, I, really, I really like food a lot. Like I, I don't know if anybody else is... I like food so much that I have thought ahead to a future meal while I'm in the middle of eating a meal. Like, I've had this happen where I'm in the middle of lunch eating a sandwich and I'll stop and go, I think I want wings for dinner. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I love food so much. I was eating a burger once and I found a little shred of, like, plastic wrap in the middle of the burger. And I thought, maybe I should stop eating this burger. But it's a really good burger. So I powered through. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine, uh, before I got my hair cut, I had this like perfect little S-shaped curl coming down the, the front of my face. And I have these glasses. So a friend of mine was like, you know what you look like? You look like fat Superman. <laughs> Superman. And then I just started thinking about the kind of stuff that Fat Superman would get called to help out with. You know, like, uh, oh no, there's a giant cheeseburger heading towards the earth. Somebody's got to help us. Oh, Fat Superman's on the case. <laughs> oh, this cruise ship has too much ice cream on board. It's going to sink. Oh, this looks like a job for Fat Superman. <laughs> this mutant cauliflower, whoa, I don't really do veggies. So. You're, you're gonna want to call like, Vegan Superman. <laughs> he looks a lot like regular Superman, but he actually keeps his thick glasses on <laughs> and actually adds a fedora. <laughs> oh no, the nacho cheese factory exploded. It's covering the city. I got this. <laughs> and then I fly in, and people are like, "Oh, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's that guy from Superman." <laughs> So I, I found out recently, I realized that uh, my mom is allergic to chocolate. And I, I say that because I've been trying to figure out the nicest possible way to call her a racist. <laughs> but she is, she is that, she's a racist. Uh, she doesn't think she's a racist. My mom is one of those, she doesn't think she's a racist. And she'll start a sentence with, I'm not a racist, but... And then she'll finish it with something really racist. Like, she'll say, I'm not a racist, but, uh, Asians kind of give me the creeps. <laughs> or like, I'm not a racist, but, 
Uh, if it ain't white, it ain't white. <laughs> Swears that she's not a racist. <laughs> Awful lot of her tweets in with hashtag white power. <laughs> Uh, which is weird. My mom's a racist, uh, but my my sister, you know, and myself, we, we were raised by her and turned out racist. Uh, my sister, I don't think my sister could possibly be racist. And I say that because a few weeks ago, we, we ordered a pizza with green peppers on it. And my sister was like, why do they call these green peppers if they're not green? And that's when we realized that my sister is colorblind. And so we had to put her down. And I and I, I couldn't possibly be racist because I have a black friend. I have a black friend. That's a joke. I don't have just one black friend. Uh, I have three. I have three black friends. Uh, I have a little trouble telling them apart. <laughs> not, not because they're black, it's because they're triplets, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I really don't want people to think I'm a racist. Like, I, I recently spent an hour in an art supply store because the cashier was black, and I felt uncomfortable asking her where the colored pencils were. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is pretty funny, guys. <laughs> and there's more. Here it comes. Uh, I work at a children's museum. I work at the local children's museum in the uh, in the gift shop. Uh, in that gift shop, we sell a lot of things with uh, kids' names on them, like cups and, and keychains and things like that. You know, the, the personalized things that you buy at gift shops. Uh, and we always get some parent who comes in there and they get mad because we don't have their kid's name on a cup. Like, it's not my fault that you gave birth to Kale, you know? <laughs> like, not, well, not that she gave birth to Kale, because that makes it sound like the kid came out and was like, Hi everybody, I'm Kale. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, how do I get my hands on some of this mom's boob I've heard so much <laughs> I've read some very good reviews on Yelp, written by my older sister and my dad. Uh, and then, like a week ago, we had a lady come in, and she was like, I can't find my name's, my kid's name on a cup. Do you, do you have the name, uh, Quimenzala? <laughs> Quimenzala? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that we don't have that. <laughs> But you know what? Um, maybe I can, maybe I can check the com computer and, and see if we have it. Can you, could you spell it for me, please? Quimenzala. Q U I M E N Z I L L A. Okay, so the traditional spelling. <laughs> uh, we did not have that. <laughs> You meet people though with weird names, names you don't you don't hear that often. Like I was at a party recently, and I met a guy named uh, Mickey, and I think he was like the first Mickey that I've ever actually met. Uh, and then towards the end of the party, everybody kind of got drunk and passed out on the floor. Uh, and I was trying to sleep on the floor, but about ten feet from me, I could hear Mickey was was having sex with a girl on, on the couch, and the girl was like, "Oh, Mickey, oh, Mickey." <laughs> And I was just like, please let her next words be, you're so fine. You're so fine, you're so fine. Hey, Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Uh, they weren't. Uh, I believe her next words were, ow, you're on my hair. <laughs> I did not really hit it off with any of the girls at this party. Uh, I'm kind of shy and quiet, but that's kind of my thing. Like, my style is not to go up to a girl and, and just talk to her. Like, my style is more like, oh, that girl over there is really pretty. I sure hope she checks the missed connection section on Craigslist. <laughs>
it's just it's a it's basically just a confidence thing. Like I like I've had dreams where I've been fighting alongside Batman, like helping him keep Gotham City safe. And I'm just like, yeah, of course, of course I would. This is totally normal. And then I've had a dream where I'm making out with a pretty girl, and I'm instantly like, oh, this is a dream. This is a dream. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, yeah, it's just a confidence thing, uh, which is crazy. I should be. I shouldn't be so shy, you know. Like I'm. I don't know if you guys have noticed this yet, but I'm. I'm pretty great. <laughs> and I'm kind of adorable. So. <laughs> Um, and also, I've done really cool things that would impress people if they knew that I did them. Like, I was a stuntman at an amusement park, jumping off buildings and stuff in front of audiences. Um, I've been a rodeo clown, like, I've been chased by bulls. It just, it just feels weird to walk up to a girl and tell her that in the first conversation. It feels like I'm bragging, so then I have to figure out ways to slip that into my comedy act. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you guys. You guys having fun so far? Good. Good. Let's keep going. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, that's, uh... I, uh, I was recently, like, like a week, a week or so ago, I was actually hitting on this girl. Um, like, I don't normally do that, but I've had a few drinks. And so I was hitting on this girl, and it wasn't really going well, she wasn't really into it. Which is, like, I'm okay with that, because I, sometimes if I find somebody that I really like, I can be pretty persistent. Like, I won't stop until I hear a woman say that magical phrase that I love to hear, which is, <sighs> fine. <laughs> but she really wasn't into it, and I, uh, I realized later on that, uh, I was kind of barking up the wrong tree. Like I was, like I was barking up a lesbian tree. <laughs> and I tried to convince her, I was like, I, if it helps, I'm barely a man. <laughs> but she just wasn't into it. <laughs> Too much a lesbian, I guess. <laughs> but it just made me wonder, like, lesbians, do they just know like, do they, do they sense each other, like, the Immortals and the Highlander series of movies? <laughs> like, does a lesbian walk down the street and just stop and go... There's another lesbian in the car. I can feel it. And then they do whatever their version of fighting each other with blades would be. Which, I guess, would be scissoring? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, one of the last girls that I dated, she was bisexual while we were dating. I did not get to experience any of the uh, potential benefits of that. Uh, but as soon as we broke up, she went full-on lady gay. <laughs> and, uh, which is crazy, you guys. Like, I don't know, remember? I'm great and I'm adorable. <laughs> And I have dozens of dollars in my bank account. <laughs> so I can't believe she ended it. But she ended it, and I was like, ah, oh, I gotta win her back. I know, I'll become a lesbian, because I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta do some research on lesbians. So I went online and I watched a lot of what I like to call educational films. <laughs> Uh, I passed the written exam with flying colors, but I failed the physical exam uh, because I, I had uh, too many penises. <laughs> um, I had one too many penises, <laughs> and so six weeks at the academy for nothing. <laughs> uh, and then my mom was like, oh, did things not work out with that lesbian? <laughs> That's too bad, I was hoping for grandkids. Which I'm, I'm not ready for. I'm not ready for grandkids. Uh, I'm not ready for grandkids. <laughs> I'm not ready for kids either. <laughs> which would be the first step. <laughs> I'm not ready for those. Um, so when a friend of mine was like, hey, if anything happens to me, like if I die, I want you to take care of my kid. I was like, what? 
crap, what do I say to that? Like, oh, you want to give me the one thing that means the most to you in your entire life? No thanks. <laughs> I'm good. Um, and now that I know that if, if my friend dies, I have to be responsible for a tiny, live human <laughs> Suddenly, like I've never wanted somebody to stay alive so bad. <laughs> it's, it's the exact opposite of the situation with my grandfather. Because my, my grandfather is rich. So, you know, so when he dies, <laughs> cha-ching, you know? <laughs> um, but while my grandfather is like a winning lottery ticket that I can't cash in yet. This, <laughs> That's not so this, this, this kid is like a living, breathing reminder that sometimes maybe you don't just trust a girl when she says she's on birth control. <laughs> uh, but then every once in a while I think, maybe I could do it. Maybe I could be a good dad. I mean, after all, that bag of flour that I took care of in middle school <laughs> is about to graduate high school. <laughs> I guess I'm doing something, right? <laughs> Middle school, high school, weird times, right, you guys? <laughs> That's my segue for that one. <laughs> Middle school, high school, the wonder years. <laughs> um, in, uh, in high school, I lettered in band. <laughs> and, and virginity. <laughs> Um, yeah, it turns out the trombone is a pretty good weapon to use for protecting your virginity. <laughs> um, things got a little bit better in uh, college. I dated, uh, I dated a bartender. Um, she was nice enough to name a, a drink after me. Uh, she called it, uh, she, called, she called it Sex with Topher. <laughs> because it was bland, <laughs> boring, and then five minutes later you forgot that you had it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if it helps, that did not really happen. <laughs> You didn't know that that did not mean. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, and then after that, I dated uh, a girl who was actually really great. Uh, she worked at the DMV. Uh, and she had almost all of her teeth <laughs> and almost all of her hair and and almost all of her eyes <laughs> and, like normally she was okay with the fact that she had to wear an eye patch but then like one time we were in bed and I I was just joking around and I was like "Arr, walk the plank <laughs> Uh, and she, she did not like that. Uh, so I felt bad, I was like, alright, tomorrow I gotta go out and I gotta buy her a gift to make it up to her. A uh, bit of advice, uh, if you're dating a girl who is self-conscious because she looks like a pirate, uh, maybe buying her a parrot is not the way. <laughs> Not buy her a parrot. <laughs> um, I uh, the, the the last girl that I dated, uh, we started going out, and uh, like I was raised, I was basically raised on movies. Like my family, we went to the movies all the time. Um, it's just pretty much what we did. She, her family, they didn't go to the movies very much. Which just, it didn't make, it just didn't make sense to me, because, like, movies, like, all day, every day as a kid, that, like, I was raised by movies, like, a lot of my knowledge as a kid was based on movies I'd seen. Like, I remember being a kid, and whenever I would see a movie that had, like, a, a guy in it who was addicted to drugs, they always had a belt wrapped around their arm. And as a kid, I thought, oh, I guess if you're on drugs, 
you have to wear a belt around your arm. <laughs> like it's part of some kind of junky uniform. <laughs> and then I remember one day I was at the store with my dad, and a friend of my dad's was there, and he was acting really weird, like sniffing a lot. And after, uh, after, my, after my dad's friend left, I was like, Dad, what was with that guy? He was acting really weird. And my dad was like, I, I don't want to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, he's on drugs. And I was just like, oh, Dad, you stupid man. <laughs> that guy is clearly not on drugs. Because if he was on drugs, he'd be wearing a belt around his neck <laughs> to let all of us know that he was on drugs. <laughs> and then I remember one day in school, a friend of mine came to school one day and he's like, yeah, my dad got so mad last weekend that he got the belt out. And I was like, what did you do that was so bad that you drove your father to drugs? <laughs> And my friend rolled up his sleeve and he's like, You see this? This is what you get in my house when you still paint in the garage. Yeah. That, that didn't happen. That's from the breakfast club. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think that's the only time I use the mic stand is for that one thing. So I can do that thing. And then, so I don't care if it's broken. How are you? How are you doing this <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this girl that I dated, uh, complete opposites as far as movies go, because like I said, raised by movies. She had not seen a lot of movies when she was growing up, and the movies that she had seen, she wasn't very good at describing them. Because on our first date, I was like, well, what's your favorite movie? Because everybody's got a favorite movie. And she was like, you know what, there is this one that I really liked, but I, I don't remember the name of it, but it's about these three guys who are their best friends and they live on an island and they, they go on a fishing trip together I, I have no idea what she was talking about and then like a week later we were at my apartment watching TV I was flipping through channels and she goes oh wait wait go back go back you missed it go back a few channels that was that movie I was talking about so I go back a few channels and I look at the TV and I look at her I look at the TV and I look at her. I was like, so when you said it was a movie about three best friends who live on an island and they go fishing together, Jaws? Jaws? Jaws was the movie that you were talking about? Why didn't you just say shark? If you had just said the word shark, I'm pretty sure the first movie I would have guessed would have been Jaws. And she goes, I forgot that I had a shark in there. <laughs> How do you forget that there is a shark in Jaws? That's like forgetting that there are snakes in Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> or forgetting about the ghosts in the movie Ghost. <laughs> Uh, so that ended, uh, that relationship, um, which is fine, so now I, uh, you know, I'm single, so, and I've noticed that there are a lot of, a lot of, uh, attractive ladies in the crowd tonight, so, you know, I shouldn't be single for much longer, <laughs> based on how I feel I've done tonight. So, if, any, if any of you would like to buy me a drink after this, maybe take me home, I'd be happy to make it up to you. <laughs> I'd be happy to make it up to you by disappointing you sexually. <laughs> um, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot better now than it used to be, because now I live pretty close, like I, I just live a few miles away. Uh, I used to live way out in Pelion, South Carolina, which I don't know if you know where that is, but if you go down to the end of this street and you turn right and you just drive like into the abyss for like, for like 25 minutes, you'll get to Pelion. And that was always tricky, like trying to pick up a girl at a bar and take her way out to my house in Pelion. Because we, <laughs> we would get in the car and we would start driving out there out in the middle of nowhere. And it, it was always fun to look at her face 
and try to pinpoint the exact moment <laughs> where she starts to think, oh, I'm never going to see my friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> and I would see that look on her face, and, and I would panic, and I'd try to calm her down, and so I would say, Relax, I'm not going to murder you. <laughs> Which I realize now is like one of the worst things I could possibly say. Like, that's only slightly better than if I'd said, That's right, <laughs> I'm going to murder you. Now please be quiet while I listen to this James Blunt song. <laughs> Thanks everybody. That's